This video is going to go over the answer key for the congruent triangles review that you did in class today. So for this first section, you're just stating the postulate or theorem you would use to prove that the triangles are congruent. So um, just in case you forget, your choices are side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, 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 side, or HL. On this first one, you don't have enough marks, but you could mark this middle um, side that they share. And then that makes this marked with three sides, so that's side, side, side. For the second diagram, we could add vertical angles. Now I have two sides and the angle right in between those, so that's side, angle, side. For this next one, again, I have two sides, so just in case you're still struggling, these are my sides, and then this would be my angle. And notice that the angle is right in between the two sides, so this is side, angle, side. For my next one, a lot of you probably see this right angle and immediately think it's HL, but if you notice, the hypotenuse is not marked, so it can't be HL. So then I have two sides, so these two are sides, and I have one angle, and the angle's right in between the two sides, so this would be side, angle, side. On number five, they share this middle side, so I can mark that, and now that I'm looking, I've marked three sides, so this is side, side, side. On my next triangle, there's vertical angles. Make sure that you double mark those because you already have a single mark on an angle. Um, and then for this one, I have two angles and one side. So I need to determine which one of my two options it is. So it could be angle, side, angle, or it could be angle, angle, side. And the difference is for angle, side, angle, the side's right in between. So that would mean it would have to be marked right here, and it's not. So it can't be angle, side, angle. It has to be angle, angle, side. For number seven, I could add a mark to that line in the middle because it's reflexive. They share it. And then again, when I'm looking, I have two angles marked and one side. So again, my options are either angle, side, angle, or angle, angle, side. And I'm asking myself, is the side directly between the two angles? And if it was, it would be this side here marked. So it can't be angle, side, angle. It has to be angle, angle, side. <clears throat> For this next one, I have two sides marked and one angle. So again, I'm looking at those two options. Is it angle, angle, side, or is it angle, side, angle? This time when I look, the side really is right between the two angles. So this one's gonna be angle, side, angle. For number nine, I have a set of vertical angles. I need to double mark those angles because I already have a single mark right here. Then when I look, I have two angles and I have one side. So again, my choices are angle, side, angle, or angle, angle, side. When I look, this side is right in between the two angles, so it has to be angle, side, angle. For number 10, CPCTC stands for corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. For this next section, it says um, triangle CAT is congruent to triangle DOG. Name the angle or side that corresponds to the given side or angle. And so what we're doing is we're matching up that pattern. So remember, the first one says angle C. C is the first letter listed. 
D is the first letter listed, so angle C corresponds to angle D. Really similar, angle A, A is the second letter, O is the second letter, so angle A corresponds to angle O. And then following that same idea, angle T corresponds to angle G because they're both the last letter in the congruency statement. Then you want to follow your patterns for the sides. So if you look, C, A are the first two, so that would be D, O. A, T are the second two letters, so that would be O, G. And then last one, C, T is the first and the last. So that would be D, G, first, last. And then finally, on the front page for number 12, it says complete the congruency statement. So it gives you the beginning part, and we just need to follow the pattern. So for this first one, side R, T has three marks, and then T, S has one. So we want to follow that same pattern, three marks, and then one, so it would be F, D, E. And make sure you don't forget that triangle symbol. For the second congruency statement, they just name it a little differently. So this time they call it S, T, R. So if I start with S, T, it is the one marked side, and then I go to TR, it's the three marked side. So if I follow that pattern, I would have to name it E, D, F. On the back, this first one just wants us to mark the figures using the given information. So for this first part, um, AB is perpendicular to BC. Remember, perpendicular means there are right angles. So where AB meets BC, there's a right angle. And that's the same thing for over here. Where DE meets EF, there's a right angle. The second part, angle A is congruent to angle D. Remember, angles get arc marks unless they're a right angle. Those right angles get a special square box. But for these A and D, we're just going to give them the arc. Since we already did technically a one arc for the 90 degree, you could double arc these if you wanted. I wouldn't mark it wrong if you didn't. For the next piece, AB is congruent to DE. Those are sides, so we mark them with a tick mark right in the middle. And for the last one, AC is congruent to EF. These are also sides. The second time we mark sides, we double mark. So these are what our pictures would look like once we got done following those directions. And that's all we're doing with those. We're not saying what shortcut, we're just marking the figure. The next two are some proofs. The first one's partially filled in. Always remember, whatever's given, you just write it down exactly as is, and it's very important that you go mark the figure. So for this first one, Rx is congruent to Sx. Rx is a side, Sx is a side. They both get those single tick marks right in the middle. Next, um, X is the midpoint of QT. That's also given, so we just write the word given. Now remember, X being the midpoint means it's right in the middle. So what happens is the segment QT gets split into two parts that are the exact same length. And if you look, the two parts are QX, and then the second part is XT. And so that's what we're going to mark, QX, XT. And that's also what we're going to write. So QX is congruent to TX. Because that's the definition of midpoint. If X is right in the middle, it gets split into those two parts that are the exact same length. 
Next, if you look at the diagram, we have used our givens and we can now mark these vertical angles. They named these angles RXQ and SXT. So vertical angle theorem. The next statement says triangle RXQ is congruent to triangle SXT. We know this is true because we marked two sides and the angle right between those sides. So this is side angle side. And lastly, now that we know the triangles are congruent, we can prove that RQ is congruent to ST because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And then for the last proof, everything's blank, but this is a very straightforward proof. Again, we start off by writing down the given and we mark them. So the first one, JK is congruent to LM. So I go to JK and LM and I both give them a single tick mark because they're sides. The second statement, JM is congruent to LK. It's also given. This time I'm double marking JM and I'm double marking LK. I'm now out of givens, so I look for either a line that they share or vertical angles. And in this case, these triangles share MK. So MK is congruent to MK, and that's given. It's the third side, so it gets three marks. After this, I've now proved that these triangles are congruent, so I just need to name them and match up my pattern. So I'm going to choose to name this bottom triangle um, JKM. And if you chose a different way, that's fine as long as you match up the pattern. So if I choose JKM, it goes down the side with one mark and then across the side with three. So to follow the pattern on the other side, down the one and then across the three. So that would be L, M, K. Now, ignoring all those dotted lines I just drew to help us see the pattern, um, we can see that this was side, side, side because I marked three sides. And then finally, after we've proved these triangles are congruent, the angles have to be congruent because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent.